Alert, Yellowstone, a magnitude 5.0 earthquake and earthquake swarm hit west of the supervolcano's Yellowstone Lake. Unfortunately, the USGS has downgraded this 5.0 earthquake down to a 4.4, but we'll look at the details of it. Uh, they grounded, downgraded from a 5.0 to a 4.9, and uh, we'll see this on Sizewell Berkeley. They still have it as a 4.9, uh, whereas, of course, USGS has taken it down to a 4.4, 59 kilometers from Dillon, Montana. And uh, I don't know why. Uh, perhaps they're just uh, trying to mitigate the size of this. We'll see that there's at least a swarm of about 10 earthquakes. This is found due west of uh, Yellowstone Lake is just north of Red Rock River at the Lima Reservoir. And uh, we'll get into the details of that. Unfortunately, that's not a small quake. Uh, it's west of the lake and west of the new thermal area that has been found recently. The earthquake swarms are just in that area, 10 kilometers northeast of Lima, Montana. Here we are, we are at Sizewell, Berkeley. We have the earthquake swarm here. As we zoom in, we'll see what exactly is going on. You have this just west of Yellowstone Lake, which is here. We have an earthquake swarm and here we have the 5.0, well, 4.9. And USGS has uh, downgraded that to a 4.4. Uh, but everybody's involved with this now. They're saying that is a huge earthquake for that area. If we go to what Scientific American a little while back, reported Yellowstone National Park rattled by largest earthquake in 34 years, and that quake was a lot less than today's. Yellowstone National Park sits atop one of the world's largest supervolcanoes, struck by a magnitude 4.8, you see. And no, no doubt that was also probably uh, lowered. The biggest recorded there since February 1980, no damage or injuries were immediately reported. Tremor, relatively light event by seismic standards, struck the northwest corner, again northwest. This is exactly northwest again of the lake. That's the lake right there. So basically it's in the same area. Uh, struck by northwest corner of the park and capping a flurry of smaller quakes. At Yellowstone, they're talking about an earthquake swarm. Uh, we had an earthquake swarm here uh, right after that, or, uh, in, a, in a time period of about an hour. We had about 10. Now, we have to keep in mind that the recorded quakes are a lot more than the reported quakes for some reason. Uh, now, the national park spans, as we said, 3,172 uh, 3, square miles, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and uh, drawing millions of visitors each year. U.S. Geological Survey team planned to tour Norris Geyser Basin. People reported felt the feeling of the shaking, of course. About 1,000 to uh, 3,000 quakes strike Yellowstone every year, according to Yellowstone. It's a lot more than that. These are the ones that are reported. They recorded a lot more. The ancient supervolcano, or caldera, lies beneath the surface of the park, discovered by scientists in recent years to be two and a half times larger than previously thought. Measured at 30 miles wide, according to the park, Sunday's quake occurred near, well, okay, this is going back to the recent, that's the older one. So they thought that this was um, 
a super volcano's climactic uh, cataclysmic eruption, as we said, two million years ago, covering half of North America with ash, killing prehistoric animals as far away as modern-day Nebraska, according to the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Heat from the vast chamber of molten rock beneath the Caldera Falls fuels the park's famous geothermal features, including Old Faithful Geyser. Okay, now as far as volcano discovery, they still have not posted today's 5.0 or even 4.4, downgraded to 4.4. They have not put that up there, up there yet. But um, let's go in closer and we'll see the swarm. Okay. Let's go in closer. This whole area, of course, is affected by the uh, uh, activity of Yellowstone. Okay. And this, as we saw, was at 9.08 local time, UTC 18.08. 9.08. Nine eleven. Let's go to these. Nine thirty. Now this one was uh, a three point five at nine eleven. This was a two point three. What was it? Uh, nine thirty. So you can see that the whole thing is shaking there. Okay, two. Around nine thirty. Nine thirty three. Two point four. At nine thirteen. And you get the picture. Let's go here. This is it right here, Yellowstone Lake. Panning out. And this is Long Valley Caldera right here. So that's a major event, and uh, no doubt that's why they downgraded it, whereas uh, others, of course, worldwide, have it at a 5.0. Now, let's just remember that uh, daily there's a number of quakes that take place in Yellowstone. These are the boreholes around uh, the Yellowstone caldera. Uh, you have Old Faithful, Little West Thumb, uh, West Boundary, Madison River, Purple Mountain, East entrance, and uh, you can see that uh, they have indications of the quakes on them. Hebgen Lake, I'll leave a link below for you, Mammoth Vault. You can see uh, various uh, quakes. If they get around to them, they'll. sometimes it takes three or four days for them to post the earthquakes there. But uh, they're always going on. And as they told us, uh, they're around to, they're trying to get around to mapping the over 10,000 hydrothermal areas in Yellowstone. Uh, they were trying to do that. Uh, they did find a, an area of uh, a new uh, heat activity northwest of Yellowstone Lake recently, and they have not yet taken a field trip there because it's very difficult to get to. There's no roads close by. Because of the uh, winter snow and uh, inclement weather, they have to, I guess it'll be going a lot later once uh, all this thaws out. And uh, they want to find out if that is a spring, a new spring or a new geyser. The uh, trees have been dying around there, a huge area of very uh, specific warmth. And they have to find out what, what exactly is there. So I'll leave a link below for you for this is this thing on? Uh, is this thing on? This is Yellowstone day thumbs, and you can look at them. I just have it as a tab so you can find out what's going on. And we'll have more updates on this in the next few hours. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media.
These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.